We are back another Friday, another ZDTV. I don't know if it's just me, but good gravy. It looks like you are stuttering. I hope it's not just me. Uh, mm, okay. Well, yep. Yeah. Uh, my CPU went a little hot there for a moment, so maybe it's me. Uh, let's see. Things what seems are, smooth. Well, that's good. What are we up to today? Today we're going to do another working session. So we got a little Ziggy and his little hard hat. I do love the little working session, Ziggy. And we're going to be looking at our All Things Open demo and um, showing people around. In case you don't get to go to All Things Open, you can take a look. I think we've shown this, I don't know, a week ago or two weeks ago, whatever. Yeah. But but we've got some uh, some nice little improvements and nice little enhancements that have gone on in there. Uh, if you just want to say hi, say hi. If you want to ask a question about OpenZD, this is a working session. So it's kind of like a, I don't know if I can say Twitch stream, kind of like a Twitch stream, kind of like a stream stream, <laughs> where we're just going to be um, working on this. Ken and I have been um, bantering back and forth about using OpenZD to um, access some sort of AI slash LLM slash model that allows you to make some kind of decision. And so, or just interact with it, right? Like it's a hot space, lots of people talking about it. So it seems like an interesting, fun thing to do for our demo and also pertinent. And I'll, I'll show you why. Before we get into that, as is customary, and this is not the one, we look at the uh, release notes and what's going on here. I don't think we've talked about 0.30.4. Um, one of the big things that came out was this ZD Edge Quick Start, which also has a bug in it. And so if you try it out, FYI, you'll have to add a couple of policies that's fixed in 0.30.5. So when 0.30.5 comes out, this will work uh, a little bit better than it does right now. Works pretty well right now, but you have to know to create a um, edge router policy and a service edge router policy. So I think we can do that real quick. And then um, let's see, some changes to the host v1 and v2 configs, and then the big edge fabric merge. So that's a big thing. Um, doesn't really impact, I think, people too much, but anybody looking at the code, it'll impact you. So if we look at the ZD Edge quick start, you know, uh, as always, our CLI will give you some nice help. And so here's some little help that it prints out and shows you how you can run it yourself and customize it yourself and already initialized. And I'm not going to go too terribly deep into all of this stuff, uh, but we can take it for a ride real quick, I think, because uh, if you haven't seen it yet, it is kind of neat. So I'll make up a new PowerShell prompt. Uh, uh, let's see. And there's also this get ZD PS1 uh, PowerShell that'll go out and get you the latest ZD. So if you just go ahead and run that, it says I've already run it. Do I want to put it in my path? I say sure. And so now I can do a ZD version. And you'll see 0.30.4. I'm going to do a ZD Edge quick start. What it'll do is it'll make a little database. It'll make a just a minimalist, a minimalist of PKIs and start things up and then error out, which is always what you want, is, <laughs> what you want on a nice demo. My guess is that I have this running somewhere else. So let me go and find it. I do indeed. And let's try this again. <laughs> let's run our quick start now. And then uh, you'll notice it also cleaned up after itself. In this case, um, it's ephemeral. So you can just use this, make a new one, start it up, test, dump, pump, try it again. And so there we go. Now it's all running. Cleaned if I were itself in this case. Oops, I can hear myself there for a moment. I fixed it. So you did very quickly. Nice job. So uh, I use this PowerShell just to put things on my path because I'm so lazy. Yeah, it's convenient. Uh, it really is. And so now we can do a login to our local host, 1280. Admin, admin is the username and password. And then we can do a ZD Edge list ERs. And then you'll see I have an Edge router online. If I do an ERPs, You'll see I've only got an edge router policy for the quick start. So really I need to do a ZD edge, create SERP, all SERPs looks like this. Actually, let me put a couple of returns so you can see it. So now I have a all SERP 
and we'll create the ERP. Uh, oh, yes, all ERPs. And so that's what you would need to do basically to get your quick start up and functional. All right. Well, I think that's enough about the release notes and the quick start. Let's go back to what we're here for. All right. So what are we here for, Ken? What are we doing today? Well, um, you said to me, um, maybe we can uh, set up, maybe we can use an LLM to classify inputs for the demo. Yeah, you, let's show, maybe we should show the demo real quick. What do you think? Sure, yeah, pull it up. Let's uh, let's do that. Let's make sure it works because, you know. I mean, the uh, idea is to give somebody a quick idea, like an on-the-fly idea of what ZD is, right? Yeah, yeah. That That is the – so what, what is the goal of the appetizer itself? It's so that you can take a look and get going with ZD ideally as fast as possible with lowest, you know, a real low amount of friction. So we're going to be at the All Things Open conference, as I mentioned, uh, having a booth. Me and Ken will both be there. If you're in the Raleigh area, you don't want to stop by and meet us in Meet Space. Come on, say hi. Um, and so I've got a, I've got my appetizer here that's running, and you can see it's running, not running yet, but it's going to be running against this prod database. So I'm going to run it locally because one of the cool things about OpenZD, as we all know, is you can deploy it uh, anywhere. And through the power of the OpenCD overlay, connect to something, in this case, uh, Ken's demo that we'll see in a minute. That's, I don't even know where it is, honestly. I thought about that while we were talking, Ken. <laughs> it doesn't even was, matter. <laughs> I, that's right. It doesn't even matter. I was going to ask you where the service was that you provisioned. And I'm like, you know what? I'm not even going to do it because I'm, when, when we start talking about it, I'm going to talk about how it, it literally doesn't matter. So me as a developer, I am not going to know wherever you as the developer deployed right. your app. Now, I am I'm just writing... an API with a name. Yeah, that's and right. You've given me an identity and that's how you, that's all you ever need to know to reach out to it. I can move yeah. it to a totally new host. I could. And change... I'd never know. You'd never know. Cause right. I, the, the and I'm going to move, I'm going to, I'm going to connect to it through a different way too. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start my application up here, and this is a I'm so now I'm running in Go land. I'm going to be writing the Go. Ken, you did this in Flask in Python, so that's cool. And so uh, I'm going to start my instance up, and it's going to come through and it's going to bootstrap itself. Uh, looks like it tried to bootstrap the wrong domain, so give me one second because I don't want it to do this. Oops, I clicked the wrong button. How do I stop this? I got to do this off screen because it's got my password. So, in fact, you know what? Just just to be safe, boop. We're gonna turn that off for a moment. <laughs> Let me go in and edit my um, my configuration because for some reason I didn't turn off the domain the domain off. There it goes. Okay, okay. Now I'll start this back up again. I'll put this back on the screen. And so there we go. And so what you can't see, what's, we don't want that. What's hard to see here is down in this lower right-hand corner that you can't see behind my mouse as it's compiling and starting the whole demo up and all that stuff. All right, so when the demo comes online, it bootstraps itself. And now, since we're all using the same instance of OpenZD, I needed to namespace the, um, my particular services because the first thing it'll do is it'll come online and it'll prepare the underlay server and that goes right. through and it creates a reflex service It creates all this sort of stuff. And so these are all my services, not Ken's right now, right? These are the ones that, that I'm going to have because they all will get a scoped name. So I have an instance identifier of CDL defined. And so if I go over to my open ZD environment and I do a ZD edge list services, um, where the name contains CDL, I should have my HTTP service and my reflex service. Now these are mine running on this local machine right here. Ken would be able to get to them, obviously, if I gave him access, but right now it's just about explaining what's going to, what's going to hap happen here. And so then on my local computer, I can go to localhost 1800 or 18,000. Let me bring that on screen. And when I go to localhost 18,000, you can see I'm greeted with the appetizer example. And so now I'm going to put in uh, Clint ZD TV as my name that I'm going to use and say, add me to open ZD. So when that happened, 
over here, I should be able to list identities. Ident so it's just a web app front end that creates an identity. Doesn't give it any permissions right away except for the, the demo. Well, that would be permissions, right? So it does create oh, it, it does create an identity yep. and it's gonna be Clint ZDTV. And it does give that identity an attribute of uh, again, namespaced CDL underscore demo clients. So right. it, namespace for that instance of the app. Yeah, and, and I, I again, I had to do this because you know if you turned on an example and we had this thing running in our little production environment, they stomped on one another, and I was deleting my own identity, so I had to namespace things. Yeah, makes sense. And so that's what, yeah, and so that's what we going we got going on here. And so this is what the demo will look like and what you would see. And I'm going to change our little presentation so that it looks like this now because these real-time reflect messages will become important. So we ask you to clone a repository. I noticed that that's not centered anymore because I changed these. I wonder what I screwed up. And then it says download your token. And so what, it did provision me that identity, as you saw, so I can download my token and I can have it put it in my GitHub repository, which is already ready for me. How convenient. So it's in the same place as, as the command you're going to run. As my checked out uh, code. Yep. And so now I can run the Go. And so I'll copy that Go. Come over to here. CD to GitHub and CD to open ZD uh, Test Kitchen and Appetizer. Make it a little bigger. And so now I should be able to just run this. And it should, quote unquote, just work. And so because I'm running go run, it takes a moment to compile it. And now it's enrolling my identity and it says, hey, send me some text. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you this page over here because this is a, uh, can I do them both at once? I can. Uh, here is a message. And you Yay. see <laughs> what pops up down here. Ooh, that's neat. Is You'll get real uh, time Okay, so anybody that's doing the demo will see their stuff up here with everybody else's. Yeah, and that's the idea, right? So that when you're live at the demo, or anybody who uh, is back here, you know, quote at home, uh, that wanted to send messages to the All Things Open crowd. So right. Dave Hart, if you're watching, you want to do that, that'd be great. Or Jeff, I know Jeff likes to do this sort of stuff sometimes. You want to pop on to the demo and send some messages to the All Things Open crowd. You can do it from wherever you are. I guess, yeah. There's no right? way. How cool would that be? Anybody, if you yeah. can't All Things Open and you want to send me and Ken messages, we'll have this running on a screen somewhere and we'll be able to see them. So that'll be exciting and fun. Uh, so I challenge you. downloading chaos, though. <laughs> I am inviting chaos, which actually is a great point. It's a point. <laughs> right? Because one of the things that I was worried about is people being bad. Not so much typing. that you would see the offensive stuff, but that everyone would see well, it. Well, you know, if somebody types a naughty word, they're going to, you know, a naughty word's going to show up on our big screen at all things I mean, open. It is tempting. It, it, <laughs> it was the first thing I did, right? Yeah. Uh, so, uh -huh. <laughs> so I, I went out and I implemented uh, this little method that uh, it pulls down something from a Go repository, uh, Go away is what it was called go away github and it's this twin go away library and it's actually pretty neat right so it was easy for me to pull in it gives me a single function is it profane or not and uh -huh. if it's if it's profane and again apologies for for the bad words like you get you get the idea. Um, <laughs> so I just noticed that there's like they're plastered all over. Yeah, exactly. Like how do, you get, how do you solve this problem without exposing yourself to it? That's yeah. that's true, right? So there's one function in here that we call in our little reflect server example that checks to see if it's profane, and if it is, it reminds you to be a nice person, right? Okay. So it says, right. please remember to be kind and keep it clean. Not sending your message you sent me. Blah, right? Yeah. And so that's what I see in my local clients. And in my server down here, I see this message too. And so I do need to get a diagram. Like, you know, when you start, when you, I only have a few days before all things open, but I'd really love a diagram because what's going on here, I think is really neat, right? Mm -hmm. I have run a server on my local computer that yeah. attaches to an open ZD um, network in the cloud. In this case, it's provisioned and run by cloud ZD because 
it was uh, better for me to put it there and safer, right? Okay. So it's uh, running in NetFoundry has provided me the or us a, a network, and I've attached to that network, and then I've also attached a client to that network. So my server is running in GoLand, my client is running in my shell. And so this thing is sending a message up to the relay back down again to my server. And I don't know as a developer, I don't need to know where any of this stuff runs, right? I could stop my server, let you start it up and I could still use this to communicate to the same, to the same service, right? right. Which, so Ken and I started talking and it's like, you know, what would be really cool. LLMs, AIs, private, um, compute is a big thing. And I was like, well, you know, and this is like literally, I think yesterday, right, Ken? You and I, I had this idea, I think yesterday. Yeah. And so I said, hey, Ken, you know what would be cool? Why don't you take a look at an LLM? Can we ask an AI if this method is profane? Because, you know, lots of things happening in the world right now. And so if there is a, a message that does not look like profanity and yet is still questionable, we right. probably don't want to display that either, right? Turns mm -hmm. out you can. And so, and so you worked on some of this. And so uh, we started with uh, the, the Uba Booga. Is that what it is? Yeah, Uba Booga is a, is a text generation optimized AI model loader and web UI and API. So if you are using models that are optimized for text generation, like telling stories or answering questions or giving instructions, then... Uh, it seems to be a good fit. Um, it turned out to not be a great fit for our use case because what we really need is a text classifier model. So I'm very new to all this and eager to learn uh, about AIL and ML, but so, I settled so on uh, the types of models that do text classification. So feed it a line of text and it'll tell you something about that. I see. So, so in the broad picture, what do we? What did you make? You you provisioned some computer somewhere to make these decisions. Uh, yeah, they use I, some I needed, library. Um, I needed an always-on GPU-backed VM, so I spun that up in EC2, just vanilla Ubuntu. I installed the NVIDIA drivers for the GPU, and I'll show you what uh, what I'm using here. So this is a Python program. Can you end big in that just a tiny bit, please? Yeah, I just, I have cat lap, so it's hard to get two hands on the keyboard. There All right, <laughs> cat lap. <laughs> yeah, he's invaded my space. He always invades in my space right when we start ZDTV. I think it's on his uh, schedule. Nice. Well, he doesn't want to miss it. I don't blame him. <laughs> it's like, I was comfortable. What are you doing? Um, all right, so I used the Flask sample and lightly modified that to um, the Flask sample that we have in our GitHub repo for the oh. Python SDK. Okay, so it, you took you took an example from our Python SDK. Yeah. And, all right, cool. So it has it comes with this forward slash get route that just gives you a little hello world message. So I, I modified that to give instructions to say, actually send me a post request to this API endpoint with the text label. So if you were to just curl, then you would get, actually it's not loaded right now. So let me go ahead and turn it on so I can show it to you working. I'll talk about it. I'll go ahead and run it right here. And on the left, you'll see a little blip in the GPU memory and processing as it loads that model. And I'll describe the model as well in just a second. But over here on the left, if I just send a curl request, to that, then I, I get the uh, little instruction back. So it's expecting JSON at that endpoint. Oh, so so that is the response to the slash. It's not actually posting there. It's telling you, it's hey, telling me, yeah, you really you should it, issue a right. post to this. URL. I just wanted to put something useful there. But here's where the here's the business end right here. We're in Flask. We're defining a route for API v1 classify with method post. And then whatever comes in, it's going to feed that into the classifier that we defined above. Now, classifier is... Now, if I, if I can, so this yeah. is our sample. So this is Z-defined server, 
right? This is actually yeah. application embedded zero trust. This there is a is... Flask API that's listening on ZD, not on the normal network. Yeah, so that's important, right? So like, it, there's no port available. You can't get right. there without ZD. Right. We're using a we're using a port number to do configuration, but it's not actually listening on that port. I see. And so you have must have an intercept for port 80 then in your tunneler. Is that what's going on? Is that why port 80 classifier.private port 80 works? Right. <clears throat> the um, intercept is port 80. That's right. Yeah. All right. Cool. And the result is that it sends, if I had specific bind options for port 8000, then I would be using them in this case for, with this app, but I don't. So yeah. it'll just respond to wherever. So it's basically, uh, I'm not using any bind configuration. It's just answering for anything that gets intercepted. Sure, sure. But uh, yeah, that's really short. That's only 71 lines and most of it's the logging configuration for Flask, which <laughs> uh, just did that. I just dumped that in there hastily so I could see the request coming back. But here's the, the business end again. Um, we're saying import from transformers import pipeline. This is how simple it is in the end. Classifier is this, this pipeline right here lets us say, use the first GPU, do sentiment analysis using this model that I downloaded from Hugging Face, which is a text classifier model. So uh, that's what got loaded into the GPU right here when we turned this thing on. So that's the classifier object, and whenever you send so a request, so you just went out, you went out to Google or your favorite search engine, and looked for a a pre declared model of yeah. I went to Hugging Face here, and I said, "Give me English models that are for ta task text classification," and then I just typed in offensive right here, and the first resort result uh, sorted by likes is. A, a fine tuned model for evaluating tweets as offensive or non offensive. And conveniently, it returns JSON. So I, uh, it actually gives you like structured output. I'll give you an example here. So we say, and, uh, so make that bigger. Let's send it to the right place. All right. So before I run it, we'll just study this for a second. We're gonna. So I'm gonna make, I'm gonna make a post yeah. to the API v1 classify passing text of I am a little teapot. Yes. And it should say that's fine, non-offensive. Right. I can pipe that to JQ. Actually, it should be valid JSON. What if, what if you add sexy between A and little? I'm a sexy little teapot. Non-offensive. Okay. Does it give you a score? Oh yeah, yeah, it does. Oh okay. So so I could so if I as a um, implementer I could decide that the score of 55 is offensive yep, exactly it gives you a cardinality and a magnitude for each and so um do you i see that one is scored as offensive because it uses the word ugly right right which yeah, is apparently yeah that's interesting now we can read about the methodology the researcher used a little bit uh there's not a whole lot right here but usually you can find uh more information about from the researcher. Okay. Well, I mean, like, the, like I think, I think this is perfectly reasonable for our own needs, right? Yeah. It's just it's, the first thing I found. There's a whole, but there are thousands of models. So we oh, can I'm sure probably find it's apparently a very common task, you know, classifying input. Okay. And so and this is using uh, some Python library that is um, geared toward using these language models. Yes, this is using the transformers library, which has a super convenient class uh, pipeline. And how did you find those two? Through the hugging face natural language processing tutorial. So they just showed you, hey, this is a good thing to use and try it out. And you're like, this is perfect. Yep. <laughs> perfect. Love it. 
And what is Hugging Face for those who aren't familiar? It's a platform for uh, sharing models, data sets, and what are they? Models, libraries, data sets. Yeah. Basically, uh, I own, I've only explored models so far. Data sets, I think you would use for if you wanted to further train one model. Like if you have one model that was trained on some data set and you wanted to also train it for fine tuning on yet another data set. And if you are a researcher and you create a data set, uh, say we made a data set based on the ZD docs and we mm -hmm. wanted to give other researchers the opportunity to fine tune their models on ZD documentation, then we could share that data set in here. And we could also provide a model that's already trained on cool. the ZD docs. All right. So uh, that's all neat. So you've got, you've got that ready to run. I can see that it runs over ZD. Yep. We have a Go-based program that wants to determine if something is offensive or not. And so now we just have to go and adapt. Simple HTTP request. Yeah. Yeah. So I have to make an HTTP request from my service to your service because we have this reflect, uh, the, the appetizer, ha you know, it is itself a application embedded zero trust, um, solution. And so we're going to make a request from that to this service, right? Right. So that's what we'll need to do. All right. Well, uh, let's, you want to go ahead and, and try it out? See if we yeah, can get it do done it in uh, do it. 20. Yeah. Do you have an identity with permission to dial my classifier service? So when the, when the, um, service turns on, the first thing it does is prepare itself. And when it prepares itself, it deletes its server identity and then it creates its service identity again. And so where's the create identity? Right oh, there here. you go. You can just give it the right attribute then. And so right now I give it the bind role of demo servers. Yeah. yeah. And so exactly. I, I would need to give it the proper attribute. And so what I'm going to do is look to see how this actually uh, creates the attributes and whether or not it is, uh, it is a string at the moment. So really I probably should just change this to take attributes. And that way I can just pass them in. Yeah. So let's take this into a pointer of S to model attributes. And then we'll just call this attributes like this. And so now that should work. And then if I go back to my main function, it should be grouchy because, uh, where, no, not here. Zoom in here. Yep. Because I no longer have, uh, attributes I now have actually you know what I should do let me go into this and steal the exact initializer and then come back here and I can say uh, bind attributes is fine as this and it's uh, the bind role and what what is the attribute that I need to add Classifier clients. Class of hyphen? Yep. Okay. And then bind attributes. And then this should all compile. And so oh, that's bind SP role. It should be dial, right? Negative. So these are uh, good point, right? So this is my identity. My identity is my server. It needs to bind services. It needs oh, to bind got one list of, of attributes for one identity. So you were just giving it permission to dial. I, I'm giving, thing. now I'm giving it two attributes. Okay. So if this is a good point, let's go back over here and let's list our identities and actually, uh, so demo server, this is yep. the server right now. You can see it only gets the demo servers attribute. Okay. Right. So this is the attribute that this identity gets. And so now when I turn it off and on again, assuming I did everything properly, right? Which is always, you know, the first time you run code, it never works, right? <laughs> so let's see, we got compilation error because this is used in one other place. No problem. Uh, let's see, is it in my, it's not. I need to do a new uh, rest model dot attributes. And then give it not a parenthesis, this, and then this, and then it needs, to, oh yeah, it just needs a scoped name. There we go. All right. So now when I see, never works the first time, Ken. Let's see. Now it should be compiling. Yeah, it's compiling. 
Yep. All right, there it goes. And so now when I come out to here, you can see my identity for the demo used to be I two whatever. And so when I run this now, that identity will be different and it'll have classifier clients in there. Cool. All right. So now this identity is able to dial your particular service. And so what I'll generally do in situations like this, because I'm, uh, I won't say lazy, but I'm like, I don't want to wait forever. Take off my breakpoints. I now need to make an HTTP request using uh, a Zetified client. And I need right. to, so I need to remember because I, you know, this is the kind of thing that you do one time and then you just use your, your library. I need I to go remember. A sample in the Go SDK. <laughs> I bet you there is. Let's go take a look. All right. That's where I would look. Yep, that's where that's where I'm gonna look to. So SDK Golang uh, is here, and then let's take, take off stuff, and then uh, go to example. And oh, you know what? How silly of me! I have a curl Z example, and it just happens to be in here, right here, right there. Oh yeah, that's the other so, part of the demo. That is the other part of the demo. <laughs> That's exactly right. And so you you're going to be see, okay. Clint. You're going to be yeah, okay. Well, you know, it's, you forget about things as you do it, right? So yeah, you can see this is. is exactly what I did in order to make a new ZD client. So if I look at what a new ZD client is, it makes a new HTTP client. And really, that's all there is to it. That was neat. I don't know how you, how did you do that, Ken? I'm just fiddling with things. Ignore me. Yeah, no, I was, it, it just uh, made me, made, caught my eye. All right, so here's how I make a new uh, client. Let's see, what am I doing with this thing? I am making the request up here. This is what I want. So I want all this stuff. And so I'm going to go to the place where we make the is profane, and we're going to make a new function in here. Uh, boop. We'll call this. Uh, is this going to be scoped to the? It doesn't matter. Function uh, is what's that? Is model is, is offensive. offensive. Is offensive. Yeah. Offensive, and we'll give it uh, some input. And it'll be a string. And it'll return a boolean. And the first thing we need to do is I don't need args. So what's my URL going to be that I'm going to dial? Classifier dot private. It's HTTP, right? Uh-huh. 80. Yep. The URL? Oh, sorry. The rest of it is API v1 classify. All right. That looks correct. Yep. Okay. So there's a URL that we're going to dial. And we're going to say classifying, classifying uh, input mon input as offensive at here. And then we're going to take, uh, let's see, a new ZD client. This is my identity file, I think. So let's see. This takes an identity file. All right. So this will be my first question because I, I believe I already have a context. Do we have a new ZD client that does not take an identity file, but instead yeah, takes... you want this to be fast. So if you've already got a context, you want to keep using it. Well, so it's not so much the... that that's, that's not so much what I'm worried about. It's actually more about the, um, the function itself. Like if you go back and you look at the way that I created the underlay server, uh, let's see, where do I create that identity prepare? Oh yeah. See it right here. So you can see the, uh, the response from the prepare function is a ZD config. And that ZD config is obtained through enrolling a, of an identity. And so you can see down here, I enrolled an identity. I did all the dance, but I never wrote this thing to a, to a file. I just found my identity. I pulled right. out my OTT, my one-time token, and I used it to enroll that identity. And that's what I, um, well, you don't see that down here, but here I am enrolling it, enrolling it, and returning my configuration. So I actually don't have a file. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at, where's my, oh, right here, Zedify client. I'm going to look at what this does. And so in here, it's going to be loading uh, an identity right here, context from identity. 
and I'm just going to steal this because really this is just a helper function. Sure. And what we probably should have in in common.go is in, oh, it's my code. So I can just make this. Fantastic. So funk. Oh, you thought new. for a second there that you were in the SDK. I thought I was, I thought I was in the SDK. Yeah. yeah okay. you're still in the demo it's a context or a config? Don't actually remember which of the two that is. Do you recall off the top of your head? Mm -mm. Oh, it's right here. Context. Context from file. ZD.context. So we'll take in a CTX and then we'll do all this. Uh, ZD.context. Do Badu. And this returns an HTTP client. And so. Do I ever call New Z? I wonder if I ever call this thing. <laughs> Does make me wonder. Return new ZD client. Oh, from context. And then CTX. And then I gotta name this thing differently. And it takes a pointer. This is not a pointer. So I don't even need, yeah, I guess I'm gonna have a pointer. And there's that. And then this wants to be used as a not a pointer. Fine. I won't pass a pointer then. Uh, this creates... Okay, I'm going to have to, I guess. This is returning a pointer. No, that's not a pointer. Okay, okay, okay. Oh, okay. It all compiled. There it goes. Wait okay. Minutes. So far. So, uh, instead of doing all of this, I am going to scope this function to the uh, overlay server, right? What did I call this thing? Um, reflect server? Yeah. So I'm gonna put this function on the reflect server itself because when- Which is an interface? Uh, technically reflect server is a struct and I'm just hanging a function off of that struct. It's kind of okay. Golang's way of kind of implementing classes, but like okay. not really, you know? Um, the reason why I'm doing it this way is because the prepare function, doo, 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 doo. Oh, it's the underlay server that does this. Well, what I want to do is when I make the reflect server itself, I want to create a uh, HTTP client. Uh, so we'll call it um, offensive uh, classifier. I'll make a classifier client that is an HTTP client. So when the reflex server is created, I want to just go ahead and, and do all of this. Make sense? When the reflex server is created, you want to go ahead and instantiate your client. That's right. That way I don't have to keep creating it over and over again. I can just reuse it. Over oh over. yeah. I think that's what you want. Yeah. Because yeah. It should, the, I expect the SDK to manage your session for you basically. Yeah, my Likewise. only point is I don't want to create a new HTTP client every single time I want to make an HTTP request, right? I want to use the yep. one that I just created. Okay. So so when I prepare the underlay server, I'm finding this a little bit strange because it actually returns its own identity, which, okay, no, that makes sense. And then I start the reflex server and I pass that server identity to the start reflect server. And so what I'm going to do, whoops, I'm not in the right window. No, come on, be in this window. What I'm going to do is when I start the reflex server and I, I get my new context and I do all of this stuff, I'm actually going to make my classifier here. Um, and in fact, I, where do I make the reflex server? Oh, it's down there. I see it. So here I'm going to say my classifier client equals my new classifier client. And then I'm going to make a new classifier client can't have a stream without a kitty cat and then we're going to do new client from context and pass the context right i think that's correct unresolved reference so where is this function this is in common okay so now i've got a new classifier client i stuffed it into my struct and so now whenever my whenever my uh Reflect server wants to, it should be able to access the new classifier client. And so down here, I don't need to do this. I'll just do new classifier client. Actually, not that. I'll do uh, 
r.classifierclient.get. So that'll get me that. And actually, it's not a get, is it? It's a post. It's a post. And so yep. since it's a post, it'll also take a body. Right. And the body is JSON. The body is JSON. Yep. And then um, I'm going to have to parse the response, too. Yeah. So I'll have to go re remember how to do all these things because these are things I generally don't do. Let's see. How do I post a URL? I'll post a body of uh, JSON to go. I know I need to serialize some struct into JSON. So what is the um, type um, class if classifier? Since the API is only doing one thing, we could just change it so that it respond well you're well, still gonna the, need to parse the response because it has multiple values but the input could be just plain text body so if we look real quick here it takes it takes a data data is the input it takes that's the body yeah yeah that's that's the body, the body i got is a, i got you on string. i got you so it's just all the body yeah yeah and so yeah. Oh, and uh, no, actually, that's what I wanted to see. The I wanted body to see is JSON. Yeah. No, I wanted to see the JSON. So it's it's a text and then whatever the text is. Okay. Yep. yep. So, yeah. So here I need to make a text. And so down here, go. I'll make a body equals classifier body. And then text is the input. Like there this. we go. Okay. Now I got to remember how to convert a struct to JSON. I can't just pass body. I got to I don't remember how to do that. Um, so right now you've got go data and you need to, you need to stringify it. Yeah, basically. So this is where I go and ask chat. GPT. Serialize. Show me how to serialize a struct to JSON in go. Chat GPT just makes all these things that you forget about. Uh, just tremendously easy. Now you need it inside your editor. I just now. Uh, you know what is funny is um, where is it? Do 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 AI assistant. So you can actually do that now with yeah. uh, GoLand. If you can you... do it in VS Code too. I've got it set up over here. Oh, is that just right? This, yeah, you just click this button. Nice. I got to log in. Yeah, do that some other time. All right, so. Here's what it told me, my JSON data, Marshall uh, body. And then eh, return. Nah, this will, that won't happen. Underscore. <laughs> Only good things will happen. <laughs> JSON right. data. So what doesn't it like? Not enough arguments. What does the post want for arguments? Post is the Maybe URL. A, oh, coding type, content type. Yeah. What's that? Eight. Oh, um, the post is going to be application slash JSON content type. Thank that you. is required. And then JSON data. It doesn't care for. It wants a byte array. Is that what it's asking? Did you have to get it in evident encoding type? It wants a UTF reader. Data? So I, I need to. No, I need to convert the string to a reader. Yeah, you know, I, again, I'm pretty sure that's a, that's a one-liner, uh, you know, but I just don't do it enough to have it at the top yeah. of my head. Reader equals new buffer. That's what it is. All right. So that's that, that, and that. Now, what does our response end up looking like? It comes back with a list of dictionaries. Each one has label and score. So if you were to provide multiple... So it's an array of yeah. a struct that has label and score. Yep. So we'll take classifier result, and it'll have a label. Is a score a double? A score is a, What is score that? Is a float. Float. Thank you. All right, and so there's our classifier result. Actually, this is, and we need one that's all of them. Oh man, another thing I don't do often enough is define a slice. 
class, let's see, this is results, classifier result. Boom, right? Should work, yeah? What do you think? So Somebody out there? Classifier result, oh, I see. It's an array of classifiers, okay. Yeah, right. And so this is the thing that we want to uh, turn our response into. And response is going right. to be what? A, what is the post? It's going to come back to JSON. Uh, so response and an error again. Yeah, we'll just log the error. And we don't want to log a fatal. Just log an error and return uh, false if it has an error. And then let's see. So this is a response. What is a response? Is that going? HTTP response, I assume. Yeah. All right. And so I'm going to have a response dot body, which is probably going to be another reader. Yep. And so convert a HTTP response to J uh, a struct. Oh, no. I gotta go Google that too, or, or chat GPT that. Cause again, this is the stuff I just do once every once in a while. Uh, this is a bit uglier. Body, read the body, copy. All right. So I'll use this, that, you know, so now we got read the body, body, and error, error. We'll do these two things again. And hello. Hello. All right. Let's do a uh, read error. I always like having my actual errors. There we go. Body, body, beep, boop, beep, beep. Not person, but this is a uh, classifier results. Results. And then unmarshal that. Why is this angry? Uh, body is used more than once. This is uh, input body. How about that? Input body. Uh, so far, there we go. And then we return. Return true. I don't need a semicolon. <laughs> All right. And so now I've gotten my stuff. I want to do this. I want to do this. Copy, copy, paste. And then I'm going to just presume there is an a result in there. So if um, results results zero dot no classifier results results yeah I should be able to access that no. All right, classifier result. Oops, uh, result. Results zero. Oh, that's why. <laughs> Almost there. Almost there. And then return result dot uh, label equals. What's the text that it returns? The non-offensive or offensive label and score. No, no, no. It's either capital the... O offensive. Yep. Or... All right. Now we put our breakpoint because we were hyphen offensive. No, I just I just need to know if it is offensive. Okay. So we wrote a whole bunch of code. Let's see if it compiles and let's see if it'll work. All right. I'll go back to my uh, here. And since I'm stopping everything, I've got to restart my client after it starts up. So this will be SDK, ZD SDK to SDK, no agent tunnelers. Nothing, next. all application embedded. Yep. And so I run this. Hi there. By the and way, this EC2 instance has a security group with no inbound rules right now. So there is, there's actually like a firewall up with no inbound ports on the instance where the LLM is running. As it should be. All right. So let's see. Let, we'll say if the go away is profane line, 
and let it through. And so here we'll run r dot is offensive line if is offensive because I forgot to even invoke our function else. And then this else will be actually let it through, right? Uh, so yes. I'm just so we have a local filter if it's profane and then if if it's not detected as profane then we'll go ahead and send it to the LLM. And so if it is offensive and let's put that breakpoint here. So now we reboot it again because of course you can't ever do it right the first time. It is the law of programming. All right. I mean this if we fit this in an hour can that's going to be pretty. <laughs> I'm going to be pretty happy with our ZDTV. I'm not. I am not going to lie, especially after like 20 minutes of setup. Getting close. Yeah. All right. Let's do this. And so, uh, hi there. Uh, here, here I am. All right. It's my breakpoint. Cool. Here's my line. Here I am. And so let's mm -hmm. see. We step over. Classifying input as offensive. Input body, bup bup do. Let's see if our JSON data looks right. Does it show us JSON data? Oh, that's hard to see. We'll, that just, we'll just see. we'll assume that that worked. Uh oh, we had a we had a false in there. What was the post? Oh, that's Classifier not that's private. the uh, that's the intercept, not the service name. That is the intercept, not the service name. I see. So. Um, that won't work for me then. What's I can this? Do, the service name is classifier service. You're sure? Yes. <laughs> the way you said it was not very was not very sure. I confirmed it while you were doubting me. <laughs> but I mean, you were you, correct. You, I had doubts. You put the doubt. You put the I, doubt. I, I did, yeah. <laughs> it's classifier right. hyphen service. Oh, hyphen. See, should have said that too, because I had a period there. There you go. Well, it's not gonna. I'm gonna recompile everything anyway. Is it chugging? Hello, are you chugging? There you go. Chug away. Clear. All right. Come back here. Reset my client. I got to make the client more resilient to the thing going away. Hi there. Here, doot, 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 doot. Let's put this breakpoint down here. Doot, doot. Hey, I got a hey, request. Hey, we got a response even. But right. I doot, got a trace doot, back. Doot. What's that? I got a trace back. Key error text. Uh, I guess the the JSON didn't come through correctly. Well, oh, you know why? Why? Hmm, I know why. Because uh, what what's the attribute for JSON in a struct? Let's see if Ch GPT can figure that one out. You have to annotate your um, fields with uh, JSON YAML to let it know, or not YAML, um, the JSON doodad, so that it knows that it's uh, uh, what the attribute is that it should be called. Oh yeah. So this is label, right? The result, yeah. Label and score. score. And then that is just empty. I think that will just work. Well, that's cool. I mean, we already you you saw it, so we know it got there. The right? request came in, yeah. I did. I, didn't I mean, log. I'm gonna not gonna lie. Like, like that was great for the first effort. That's pretty. So that, close. That, that pleases. Yeah, that pleases me. That was pretty good. Here I am, and then we'll go, we don't need this anymore. Let's put it on one of these and play that through. Scroll over this. We know that works now. Looks like you're getting responsive, responses. Yep, what's the results say? Uh, what, how do I copy this? I got one good request. So it says not offensive. I can see the results. I can see the result. I can see we got a body. So we successfully sent our request, and that's label and score. 
and it doesn't, it, it's not unmarshalling correctly for some reason. Uh, what is the reason? I'll marshal the body into results. Mm -hmm. What's the body show me again? That is an array. Ugh, I don't know how to serialize an array into results. I can see that we were successful though. I really want to get this integrated. Um, well, how do I properly annotate the results? Let's see. Uh, where is my struct? I must have scrolled past. There it is. I want these two things. Here are my struct. Here is a response. Let's see. How do I properly deserialize that JSON into the classifier results struct? Let's see. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. I must, I, you know, I might have to do like uh, an any on that struct. I actually don't remember exactly how to serialize JSON to array go. There's probably some JSON, uh, like any, or something along those lines. Yeah. Or interface, maybe. Let's see. So I have some results. Where's my body? Let's get this again. View. You can go to the Go Playground and figure it out there. That's what I'm going to end up doing. Uh, let's see, results equals. Oh, that's interesting. Uh, input. to figure out how to deserialize the response yeah that's all i'm doing now it's just goisms that i'm not a hundred percent you know not a hundred percent on change that to a float 64. anybody watching know how to do it shortcut lifeline ah uh, ah uh, i i maybe instead of doing it this way maybe i can do it this way and then that will be like this. Let's see what happens. So instead, uh, instead of having a type that wraps my result, I'll just define it as a slice right out of the gate. This might work. Let's... Non offensive. Well, our label equals non offensive, Ken. I think we just did it, by man. We just did it. All right. So that was the key. That was the magic is All to right. cool. um, use the fair, declare it as a slice. Yeah. Hey, look at even up, oh, up, oh, up, oh, up. Oh. Here, let's, it was there for a minute. I, I promise. Let's go back and. So it just descend, it just uh, changes the message. Look at that. So I'm these, getting, I'm logging requests over here too. Show us, show us your little blip. Actually, let's uh, let's 
let's put them both on the screen at the same time, shall we? Um, how do we, oh, yeah, I want to do this. Nope, where's the four-way? This, yeah, there we go, there's the four-way. It'll be hard to see, but there's Ken, so in the upper right, actually, let's do this. Okay, in the upper right, we got Ken's computer running Python, running in Flask, and in the bottom right, we have Ken. In the upper left, we have Clint's computer running the Reflex server, the Reflex client, and um, making requests through the Opens Video Overlay. And in the bottom left, you have Clint. And so we are going to send some text here. Here is a message. And in the, on the upper right, we should see a blip in Ken's, I see the log, here is a message. And yep. where's the blip? I don't see the blip. Um, I, it's not, it's not changing the amount of memory that it's using. Uh, it's just parsing the model that's already loaded in the GPU. So I, I mean, if what a said, cool demo though. This is so neat, right? <laughs> he loves it. <laughs> I, I do. This is really cool. Uh, Radford's yeah. watching. Hi, Radford. Uh, so um, like this is going from my computer up into the cloud, back to my computer, up into the cloud, back to your computer, back into the cloud, back to me. And like, you know. The latency is, I, I think, fantastic. Hey, like, basically, as soon as I type that, it comes to you and it comes back to me. That is super cool stuff right there, Ken. I now got a little do... blip of processing, GPU processing, when I sent a series of four input requests in rapid succession. But, yeah, we're not even touching the capabilities of this low-grade data center GPU. Now... What's cool is I did a this is ugly and I clearly have some sort of bug in there because I what can see then? it showed up as offensive to you. Oh, yeah. oh no, it's not a bug. Nope. Clint just left a breakpoint on. Did you evaluate the score as well or just whether it's offensive? I did not evaluate the score, but I'm pleased okay. as punch that we made this happen in an hour, dude. Like that. Yeah. That's, that's really cool. that is really cool. So now now we just gotta figure out how to host your service somewhere and um you know what happens when we turn it off and can't get to it you know because like um we want to make sure that that this thing's resilient for our little demo and so there we go there well, we I'm, go i'm using ssh to get to the vm through zd right now in okay. uh, vs code here i'm connecting to ubabuga.private right which is the ssh server Ever ZD. No, no, I just want to, like, can you turn off your server? Turn off the Python server? Yeah, the stop, it, stop it from responding because then my machine will time out. Right. right. Yeah. So if I type I this, if I type this, the, the question will be do I get an error rejected by application? Perfect. Right. So I am now going down through the code path of the is offensive going through and trying to dial that URL and failing. I wanted to see if it would time out. Like what would my, what was my user experience going to be like? Right. So, you know, there, there it is. There is a tiny delay because it's, it's got to try to dial and fail as opposed to. So it's to evaluating both. If it, if it shows up as not profane, then it does evaluate it for offensive, correct? Yeah, I did. I did both. Right. So if it is, profane, it hits our prof if it evaluates profane in the library, then it goes ahead and responds immediately. Exactly. Like, babies are ugly. And then babies are ugly. But is that profane? Doesn't doesn't uh, come okay, through. So because it's not profane it's just offensive <laughs> that's right and our offensive <laughs> checker is not running can you turn your offensive checker back on again all right yeah give it a second to spin up model is loaded negotiating zd all right should be ready okay so this is not offensive a these are ugly. Ah. <laughs> so I'm going to change that to be something like that was offensive. That was not profane, but that was offensive. See, now that would be a better message to print out. Instead, I just printed nah. Anyway, Ken, what a great little demo this was. Wasn't yeah, cool. I was really excited. That was a fun ZDTV. It was exciting to do. Uh, I think we had a resounding success, which is amazing. Uh, didn't falter too much, had a couple of bugs we had to fix. That was, that's a good time right there. Yeah.
Good working session. All right, man. Thanks, Thanks for the